Okay, in this mini tutorial we're going to look at the basic topography of the ventricular system. Uh, we're going to look at where the ventricles sit within the brain itself in the top left image. We're then going to look at the um, appearance of the ventricles as if they were uh, an endocast which had been formed. Uh, and we're going to look at what the ventricles look like in T2 weighted MRI in the sagittal and the coronal planes. So let's start off by reminding ourselves that the whole central nervous system develops during the process of neurulation, um, where the flat ectodermal layer um, buckles, un, un, uh, buckles under itself and pinches off the neural tube. So developmentally, the entire central nervous system is actually a hollow tube. And we know about this in the spinal cord because we've got the central canal of the spinal cord, but also we have fluid-filled cavities within the brain, and these are the brain ventricles. And if we look at the top left image, um, we can see very clearly that deep within the brain is a series of interconnected chambers which contain cerebrospinal fluid. And in fact, all of these chambers here, each one of the chambers, contains a, a choroid plexus, which is involved in the synthesis of cerebrospinal fluid. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more um, about the path that the CSF flows down um, later in this video and also in an additional video that I've made. So let's have a look at the ventricular system uh, in a little more detail, looking at the bottom left image. Um, essentially, there are um, three ventricles. Firstly, there is a pair of so-called lateral ventricles, so here we can see one of the lateral ventricles and of course the other lateral ventricle is in the background in this three-dimensional image. Uh, and the lateral ventricles sit within the cerebral hemispheres. And in fact, the lateral ventricles have separate parts sitting in different lobes of the brain. So for example, this part of the lateral ventricle is known as the temporal horn and it sits in the temporal lobe. This part is known as the frontal horn, and it sits in the frontal lobe, and so on with an occipital horn, for example. <clears throat> the lateral ventricles are the, the largest ventricles in the brain. They have the biggest choroid plexuses, and they synthesize the largest amount of cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid, the bulk of it being made in the lateral ventricles, passes through a small opening called the interventricular foramen, which sits at this point. And the interventricular foramen connects the two lateral ventricles together. The CSF goes into this foramen before it enters the third ventricle. So this is the third ventricle. And the third ventricle is a very important ventricle because within its walls we find the thalamus. So the thalamus on each side squashes the third ventricle flat. And we also find the hypothalamic nuclei down here. Um, and also structures related to the pineal gland, for example. So the third ventricle has very important relations um, with regard to the thalamus and the hypothalamus in particular. The third ventricle has its own choroid plexus, so CSF is added at this point as well. And then the CSF is drained from the third ventricle into the, the cerebral aqueduct. So here at this point is the cerebral aqueduct, which goes all the way down and drains CSF into this triangular-shaped fourth ventricle. Now, the cerebral aqueduct is found mostly in the midbrain, and the fourth ventricle is at the pons and medullary levels, sitting deep to the cerebellum. And CSF drains through this aqueduct, which is relatively narrow, and then enters into the fourth ventricle. And it's from the fourth ventricle that CSF is able to escape from the ventricular system. So, for example, we can see at this point, here is the median aperture of the fourth ventricle. You might sometimes see it referred to as the foramen of Magendi. And CSF escapes the fourth ventricle at this point and enters into the subarachnoid space. We also have these lateral recesses of the fourth ventricle ending in a lateral aperture. You might hear them referred to as the foramina of Lushka. And once again, this is a path through which CSF escapes. Additionally, the fourth ventricle is continuous with the central canal of the spinal cord, but the central canal of the cord is so narrow 
that really there isn't a significant amount of CNS, sorry, a significant amount of CSF that passes down through it. Now let's take a look at some um, T2 weighted MRI scans of the brain to appreciate the um, ventricular system in imaging. Remember that T2 MRI um, picks up water. So T2, H2O, we're focusing on water. So high signal, white, refers to water, i.e. CSF. And if we look at the sagittal section, top right first, um, we can see here, we're looking into the lateral ventricle. So this is the lateral ventricle we're peering into. Um, here is the third ventricle. And that grey area in the centre of the third ventricle is the thalamus, which is bulging into the third ventricle. Here, and my pointer here is not quite big enough. In fact, it might help us if we zoom in a little. Here, at this point, is the narrow cerebral aqueduct. And CSF then enters into the fourth ventricle. Um, and we can see the fourth ventricle here in all its glory. Then the CSF escapes the fourth ventricle and enters the subarachnoid space. So we can see here is the um, large cisterna magna, just below the cerebellum. And we can also see lots of CSF surrounding the cerebellum and going into the sulci between the brain gyri. So that's the appearance of the ventricular system on a T2-weighted sagittal MRI. And if we now we look at... Um, a coronal section, I think it's important that you're able to interpret a coronal section of the brain. Once again, we can see the lateral ventricles, and here is the third ventricle in the midline, squashed between the bulk of the two halves of the thalamus on each side. And this is a very characteristic appearance of the ventricular system in a coronal section. It's a T shape, okay? So there's the horizontal part of the T, the lateral ventricles, there's the vertical part of the T, the third ventricle, okay? And then the thalamus either side, nestling just underneath the arms of the T, squashing the third ventricle flat. So really, that is the um, entirety of what I want you to appreciate um, about the topography of the ventricular system. We're going to encounter a few more details later on in the unit, uh, but for this stage, I, th I think this is the, these are the main points. Okay, thank you.